Hello, everybody. You're very welcome to this PhD podcast. I'm delighted that we can welcome from Tezuzu in Algeria, Camelia Mabarki. Camelia, you're very, very welcome. Can you give us a little bit of background about yourself? And thanks for taking the time to be here today. Thank you, Jer. So hello, everyone. First, I would like to thank you for this opportunity. I'm very glad to discuss with the passionate people like you. Um, I'm Camelia. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Algeria, more precisely from Chizuzu, as you have explained. Uh, I speak four languages, uh, Berber, Arabic, French and English. I have a bachelor degree in English and a master degree specialized in applied linguistics. Um, after my master's uh, degree, uh, I have passed an international PhD contest, which gave me the great opportunity to study in a great and leading university as well. So, in fact, I'm conducting my structured PhD in arts and humanities. I'm um, second year uh, postgraduate student. Um, um, I, last year I was studying online in Algeria due to COVID restrictions. Uh, hopefully this year I'm here. Uh, we are still studying online, but hopefully we are here in Ireland. Yeah. Great. And tell us, Camelia, where did your interest in your PhD come from? You know, where did this uh, interest in your specialism derive from? Yeah, so my family motivates me a lot uh, to carry on my studies. And um, therefore, since my first year at university, I wish to conduct my PhD. And during my second year uh, master's degree, my teacher, Professor Foldil, gave me an insight to the field of interculturality, which inspires me a lot. So it was since that period that I have decided to deepen my knowledge in this area. Great. Yeah. OK, fantastic. And um, and what was it that, yes, that, you know, um, made you decide to come to the University of Limerick? to do your research? Yeah, so after passing uh, the Algerian doctoral contests, I won a scholarship to conduct my PhD here at UL. So it was our government which chose the university. And okay. it is a great cho choice indeed. Great, excellent, yeah. I'm delighted to hear that. And yes. tell us, Camelia, um, when it comes to, say, a typical day, you know, you talked about your experience last year with regard to um, working under such uh, restrictive measures um, with regard to COVID-19 in Algeria. But now that you are in Limerick, tell us, what does your typical day doing research consist of, you know, now that, now that you're here in Ireland? Yeah, so I tend to wake up at 7 a.m. I used to book a desk in the library for four hours, usually from 10 to 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I prefer studying there at the library rather than studying at home because uh, it is a serious atmosphere. There is no distraction. Everyone is studying. Uh, so I feel more concentrated at the library. Uh, in addition, we have and easy access to books and resources there. So that's it. And then I come back home to take some rest and some food with my friends because I'm living actually with my friends. And then I carry on studying until 7 to 8 uh, p.m. No more because I'm not productive at night, you know. Uh, so therefore, I prefer to study during the day. OK, great. And tell us, what are you working on at the moment, Camelia? What piece of research are you examining? So actually, I'm um, uh, taking some modules, uh, which are EFL pedagogy, cultural studies, EFL advanced and academic literacies. And at the same time, I'm preparing my literature review chapter. So I'm reading a lot uh, regarding my topic uh, because I would like to develop my own theoretical framework. Uh, to analyze uh, the course books okay, uh, that I would like to analyze, yes, and hopefully but by the end of this summer I will end up with my literature review chapter. Great, and could I ask you, I know you're, um, it's only your second year of study and it's still, you know, relatively early in terms of your, yes. your research at the moment, but 
Could you give us an example of a time that you encountered a problem or a difficulty with regard to your PhD and how you approached this problem and perhaps even, you know, overcame it ultimately? Yeah, so, you know, Dr. G, uh, thankfully, until now, I have not encountered a problem in my PhD, <laughs> and I hope that I won't. Oh, yeah. fantastic, yeah. <laughs> so you have no example then of what you can give us with regard to a, a difficulty that you had. Um, just in terms of, say, um, last year, Camelia, how how restrictive was it not being able to, you know, to, to, to be in Ireland? How difficult was it working remotely last year when the expectation was that you would have been here on campus? Yeah, I think the uh, biggest challenge was motivation. Mm. It was not only uh, my case, but all my mates were not um, much motivated to study because we were in Algeria and we all, all, all wanted to be here, to study here, to sure. be in the learning atmosphere, mm. you know. And and how has that, has that been a transformation for you and for your, um, uh, and, and, and for your fellow PhD students from Algeria to actually be here, has that been in terms of in terms of motivation? The motivation. Yeah, I think yeah, we are all feeling more engaged and motivated mm. since yeah. we are here. Yes. Okay, great. Mm. And um, I'm going to ask you about um, the you know just more about the topic of your research, Camelia. We hear so yeah. much these days about. Uh, impact and the impact that um, uh, research can have, you know, whether it's on the discipline or as I'm sure, you know, you talk about building a theoretical framework and I'm sure you're thinking yeah. about, you know, the impact on your discipline or, you know, also perhaps the impact on wider society. So what do you think could be the impact of your PhD research on your discipline? Yes. Uh, and then, you know, obviously um, on on wider society, if that's applicable. Yeah, so uh, hopefully my PhD will increase research knowledge and bring further insights to teaching interculturality in EFL contexts as a field of study. And um, I hope that the results of the study uh, will uh, help the Algerian curriculum designers to think and to work toward qualitative improvement regarding the textbooks and their investigation. Accordingly, um, I would like to work in collaboration with them in order to bring further authenticity to and to the textbooks and to update them according to the recent pedagogical approaches in EFL, as well as according to current learners' needs. Uh, because as you know, today's textbooks are going to influence tomorrow's minds. Um, moreover, uh, since uh, the content of the textbooks is influenced by teachers' perceptions, my study will unveil the, their critical cultural awareness, which is vital in EFL classroom. And why not to initiate some intercultural training for teachers in need? Uh, finally, after my PhD graduation, I will be teaching at university uh, in English language department in Algeria. And therefore, I have the willingness to initiate the module of intercultural studies or interculturality to promote learners' intercultural awareness and intercultural competence to prepare them to, to be ready and to use English as lingua franca effectively in national, international and multicultural contexts. OK, fantastic. And actually, my next question, Camelia, was going to be about your career aspirations, but I think it's very clear that your yeah. career aspirations are, as you've outlined there, you know, to, to work in academia. Yeah. Um, so you would definitely see your approach in terms of an academic career. Exactly, yes. You know, um, learning is a lifelong process, so I don't want to stop my research after my PhD. I would like to carry on publishing articles, holding conferences, meeting experts in the field of, of my in my field of study, and why not becoming a professor? Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes. OK, fantastic. That's great to hear. Yes. And uh, what do you think, what would you say 
are the advantages, you know, for somebody with your expertise, the advantages of doing a PhD, you know, rather than pursuing a, uh, an alternative path in terms of a career at the moment? What do you think would be the, what do you see as the major advantage of doing a PhD and doing a PhD at the University of Limerick as well? Yeah, so, you know, the PhD allows me to rise my qualifications, I mean, my stages, my level of study to deepen my knowledge, uh, my critical thinking as well, my professional and academic skills. I'm now a member of research community, so I'm always involved in meeting uh, with experts, researchers who build on existing, on my existing knowledge uh, and broaden my mind each time after each discussion. And even at the personal level, the PhD boosts my self-esteem and self-confidence as well, you see. Great, that's an excellent answer. And tell us, um, you've given us, you know, really, really good uh, you know, um, ideas there with regard to motivation for doing a PhD. And if you were to advise somebody, you know, somebody, of, say somebody back in Algeria, somebody of your own age, perhaps in your own discipline, with the same kind of passion that you have for the subject, what 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 advice would you give them if the, if that person were thinking of doing a PhD? What would be your advice to that person? So first, I would say uh, be a warrior and go for it. If you want to do it, just do it. Um, love your topic. Be passionate. Uh, your topic should inspire you because a PhD is a long journey. Uh, you may face uh, up and down moments during your research. Maybe you uh, can feel demotivated uh, at some moments, but when you really like your research and your topic, you will always overcome all the barriers and challenges and you would regain your motivation and excitement to accomplish what you have started and so as I have said you may feel stressed and the pressure you may feel not productive but uh, what I have to, to say that um, I think that all PhD students uh, went through uh, such moments it is something normal so don't uh, break and just panic okay and be patient trust yourself and what I suggest when uh, we are not productive is to have some rest, to have some fun with our beloved ones, uh, to discuss with our colleagues and with our supervisors because they are here to help us. And another advice is to, uh, regarding the supervision, is to have a good and healthy relationship with them and to do not take their comments personally, uh, listen to their feedback, take their criticism from a positive point of view because they are here to help us to move forward in our research. Um, I would say also don't compare yourself to other PhD students because topics are different, methodologies are different, mm. study and styles are different. OK, so just focus on your study. Um, another advice is to manage your time wisely. I'm not saying that you have to work and to work and to only work. OK, for instance, take the advantage of studying when you are the most productive, either at the morning or at the evening, because it depends from one person to another and uh, go to the library to study there because it is a positive learning environment. And finally, try to have some rest in the weekend to practice some sports because it helps you to boost your energy. So that's it and thank you. That's great advice. Thank you so much, Camelia. That that is really excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, so, I think you've given you know just great advice there for um, aspiring PhD students and indeed for current PhD students as well. I think that's great. And I think you've just shown the importance of passion for your topic as well. And you know what you've said there about the advice, the advice that you would give to PhD students, you know, about you know, that to, to, to make sure that, it, that it, it is something that really fires the imagination, fires the passion. That is so, so important, you know, and talking about all the um, 
uh, if you like, the, the, the downsides that will happen throughout the journey, throughout the PhD journey and the importance again and again, you know, of that, you know, um, of those char characteristics and traits of persistence and tenacity are so important to have, you know, uh, on the on the PhD journey, because as you said, it is it's it's a it's a long process, you know, so but one that uh, you seem to have uh, embarked on with a great deal of expertise and enthusiasm, uh, mm -hmm. which indeed are invaluable traits to have um, when it comes to the the, do the whole doctoral journey. So I'm going to say thank you so much, uh, Camelia uh, Mabaki from Tezuzu in Algeria. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Uh, not just on the podcast, it's wonderful to have you here at the University of Limerick to have your your expertise and your insights and the 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 uh, um, and also in terms of. Uh, enhancing and increasing intercultural awareness among our own student community as well that you know which is which is uh, so important and a really important um element of being a phd researcher you know just uh, given how um our research you know we see it as crossing borders at all stages and you know being um if you like uh, uh international and global in its scale so thank you so much uh, Camelia, it's Thank been a real pleasure to to have you this morning, and uh, I wish you all the very best in your so much, uh, in in your research, in your in your PhD, and in your future career, wherever Thank that may take so you. Much. So, it was a pleasure to discuss yeah. with you. Thank you. Great, so and I'm sure the next time that we speak, I will be addressing you as Professor Mubarak. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank Great. You so Thank much. you so much, Camelia. Yeah. Thank you Take so much. Care. Bye. Bye Take bye. Care. Bye bye. bye, -bye.